Okay, Michelle. Let's get it right this time. Take 36. Action. Hi, friends. I'm Michelle Rappaport, ex-life coach and now craft brew small yay. A brew yay. Today, I'm going to take you through the five steps to a perfectly poured craft beer. Who enjoys a clean and healthy glass of craft brewed beer? I do. Who enjoys leaving the drinking establishment with a clean conscience, knowing that their glass wasn't contaminated with cholera or hepatitis, A, B, or C? I do. You have to remember, most of these establishments are cesspools for bacteria and other nighttime activities that produce reproductive fluids and some sort of discharges that may get on the bar. It's your job to make sure that none of that gets into the glass. So let's go down to my favorite part of the bar. Come on, y'all. Down to the sanitizing sink. Purification of the glass. The glass has to be purified. But what I like to always do before I use any glass is call the Center for Disease Control. But the crew has told me that they've already done background checks on all these glasses, so I'm just going to trust them with my life. All these glasses have checked out, so we're just gonna skip right into dipping it into the first bin of, and uh, I'm not sure if I should stick my hand even with surgical gloves in this water. Okay, fine. The next process is to rinse into this water that's probably local county well water. Might as well as been from the Ganges River in India as far as we're concerned. Now into my favorite bin, the sanitizer. The sanitizer cleans everything. Makes everything nice and clean and respectable like. Now this glass can walk outside and show its face to its neighbors. And it has nothing to be ashamed of. Michelle, what's got you so down? Well, we've reached the most somber part of the poor, the sacrifice. Why you gotta sacrifice some of that beer in that tap? What we're gonna do is we're just gonna eliminate some of that beer so it doesn't get into this glass. It's not that beer's fault that it ended up arbitrarily that way in that position in its life, never having a chance like the other suds that fall into the glass and enjoy their lives. Whatever you do, make sure when you're pouring the beer, it does not, it does not touch, touch the, the glass. glass. Just let the beer pour out nice and slow like and real nice. <gasps> Sugar shacks and pancake stacks. I touched the tap. I'm sorry. I'm a failure. <laughs> stupid, stupid man. <laughs> I am lower than hamster flatulence. Right? You just shut the whole thing down. I just contaminated the glassware. Nothing's any good anymore. You were doing fine until just then. I know! I'm just gonna have myself a nice bubble bath and a good cry after all this. You've earned it. I almost just ended it all. I wanted to, I thought about it. I don't have a plan though, so I'm not suicidal. Apologize about that, friends. <laughs> Took me back to my life coaching days. <laughs> I would just want to scoop the beer up at a 45, well I use a 42 and a half degree angle. People say, Michelle, why don't you use a 45 degree angle? I said, 45 is an odd number. So let's try this pour again. <laughs> I'm as flustered as mustard. You <laughs> have to cut. It, you know, uh, so I think we should cut. Take me all the way. What? We're not getting paid by the hour. Yet. I'm not getting paid at all, am I? I don't deserve money. I've never been good at anything. The poor can be perfect, but I don't have to be. Let's do this again from the top.
It is hot in here, people. <laughs> I'm sweating. Probably because of these lights that... Are these UV lights? Oh, it's been light struck. Don't 